1st of July 2021. We are on the Portage Bridge coming from Gatineau into Ottawa and the orange is in solidarity with <laughs> More, the cycle. residential <laughs> school victims. Lots of bicycles, motor bicycles. remember Monday this week the Skelly Adamson barbecue challenge constitutional challenge was rejected by the Superior Court of Ontario that would be the first instance was just the national anthem yeah that's the supreme federal court of canada and this is where the action is on this first of july that would have been a canada day unfortunately celebrating doesn't really seem appropriate in face of the unearthing of those residential school victims. So without further ado, Maxine Bernay, please. today there's other Canadians that are looking at us they're looking at your courage to do the fight the fight for a better country yes. and today that's the best day to do that yes. because like you, I'm here today to celebrate our country's 104th anniversary, to celebrate our heritage, to celebrate our identity, to celebrate our way of life, and to be proud to be Canadians! <laughs> And I'm saying no, I'm saying no to the elite politicians that are saying that our country is racist, that our country is full of hate speech. Like me, you are here today because you're saying no to that. We are not a racist country. Yeah. And contrary to what they try to do, these people, they call themselves themselves woke. We are not woke. We are yeah. Canadians. We are proud Canadians that will always fight for what we believe is right and I'm saying we will always 
be proud of our history and know this country has not been built on the oppression and colonialism. This country has been being or built on core Western civilization values on freedom. And that's why a lot of people want to come to our country because Canada is one of the freest nations on the globe. That's why they want to come here and celebrate our history. Je suis ici avec vous aujourd'hui pour célébrer, célébrer notre histoire, célébrer notre identité, célébrer notre pays avec fierté. Et c'est pas vrai que ce pays est rempli de gens racistes, ce pays est rempli de Canadiens fiers et dignes, et nous allons toujours, toujours se battre pour nos valeurs, les valeurs canadiennes de liberté, de responsabilité, de respect, et c'est ça qui est important aujourd'hui, le 1er juillet. I should be happy, happy, but I'm not. I'm mad, and today you can call me Mad Max. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm mad because our country's identity, our way of life, our freedoms are under attack. Yes. Yes. I'm mad because. We have a government here in Ottawa that is not fighting for us. No, he's a traitor! A government that is locking down our population, that is saying that not every business is essential, but we know that everyone in our country is essential. <laughs> I'm very proud to be part of the End the Lockdown Caucus with Derek Sloan, with Rene Young, with Michael, with everybody like you today. What we started is a movement, and a movement based on great ideas. But when there is tyranny, when tyranny became law, revolution, revolution becomes our duty. Because we know that our fellow Canadians, the silent majority that is looking at us right now, they are looking at us because we know there's a better future. We know that we must fight socialism. We know that we must fight for us and we know that we believe in this country and we believe in people because we believe that you have the opportunity, the dignity and the right to make your own decisions and determine your own destiny. Canadians, 
because we are looking at our fellow Canadians not based on the color of their skin, not based on their race, but based on their character. We don't want a country that will tender to every special interest group yeah. that will yeah. that will be kind of a politicians that like to be political correctness. I'm saying no to political correctness. Yeah. I'm saying yes. Yeah. I'm saying yes to the truth. I'm saying yes to the fact. The fact that all together, like John F. Kennedy once said during his inaugural speech in 1961 in front of the American, he said in 1961 and we are in 2021 and that quote is still actual today and that's too bad in the long history of the world only few generations has been granted the role of defending freedom yeah. in its maximum hour of danger yeah. you are that generation yeah. this is you I can tell you that if we have an election this fall, they will be surprised. They will be surprised because they're going to see an ideological revolution, a revolution starting here today. So, my main message today for you is you, me, and every Canadian must not be afraid to stand, stand up and speak out for what they believe. The more people will speak the truth the more people will be with us, the better it will be for us, but the better it will be for our country, and we will have a freer and a more prosperous country. Yeah. Yes, a freer and a more prosperous country. Yeah. Stay strong and free, we will win. And that's only the beginning yeah. of an ideological revolution. Thank you. Stay strong. Thank you, Michael. First of all, I just have to say. flying by. Wow. Thank you for my, thank you for everybody coming. I'm just overwhelmed. Sorry, there was my notes. Okay. I'm not a professional speaker. Those that have seen me know that. I just want to say, first of all, that it is a blessing for me to be here and to speak to all of you on behalf of Stand Up Canada. Has anybody heard of us, Stand Up Canada? Yes! Stand Up Canada! Right? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our latest initiative at the end, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit about me, and I wanted to talk about the great Canadians that have inspired me in my own life.
that makes me do what I'm doing now. So some of the names you're going to recognize and others you will not. But these Canadians are dear to my heart because they were extraordinary. People like Anne Murray. She was Canada's songbird. Does anybody remember Anne Murray? Yes, I love Anne Murray. Buffy St. Marie. Does anybody remember her? I used to watch her on Sesame Street, for God's sakes, and I'm dating myself. And then there's the La Belle Celine Dion. No explanation needed. Alanis Morissette. Jagged Little Bill. She's from Ottawa. Alanis, where are you? Isabelle Boulay. Depuis le premier jour. She's a beautiful uh, artist, singer from, from Quebec. Mr. Taylor, he was my public school music teacher who always believed in me, and he actually played at my wedding. My Aunt Dolly was a great Canadian. She was the oldest child of 13 of her brothers and sisters on my, my two-cheek Italian-Canadian family. Bobby Orr. Does anybody know Bobby Orr? Bobby Orr's from the great town of Perrytown. That's where I'm from. Go for Bobby Orr. And then, of course, we have the great Wayne Gretzky. The great. And so, you know what? All these Canadians were fantastic because they were here. They actually set the tone that they were here and I was here and I was okay with all of that. But then something happened in 2020. And it wasn't the great reset. It was all of you people. It was the great awakening. <laughs> Suddenly, we have everyday, ordinary people doing the extraordinary. And I'm only going to name a few. But right off the bat, last July 1st, it was Norman Travesy. We all went on Pirate Hill. And we walked with Norman down to the U.S. Embassy. And that was a glorious thing that Norman did for all of us. Then there was Adam Skelly. Go Adam Skelly! Woo! And finally, dear to my heart, is Pastor Henry Hildebrandt for standing up for God at any cost. too long. I can't name everybody. All of the speakers that you're hearing here today represent you. They are everyday people, average people like myself, doing the extraordinary. But I wanted to say to you, yes, last year, actually the person who inspired me the most was a 14-year-old little girl from Quebec, from Montreal. Her name was Emily. She was there with her family and her little brother Miguel. And I was doing what I was doing best. I was hugging everybody in the crowd. And then suddenly somebody tapped on my little shoulder. And I looked, and it was this little girl. And she handed me this plastic whistle necklace. And I said, no, I can't take it, it's yours. And she, they didn't speak a word of English, and my French was a little rusty. And so it, the crowd was so loud, the mother said, no, you don't understand. She went out, she bought her own, she took her own money. She went to the dollar store. And she bought all these. And I looked down and there was a boxes of these necklaces. And she was handing them out to people that were expressing love, that were just being joyful and hugging. And so then we hugged each other, the me, the mom, the dad, the kids. And I tell you, we were crying. But what was happening was, it was the awakening of our hearts. All of our hearts. Look at all of our Canadian hearts here that have awoken to this. You know, it was that awakening that made me realize with the volunteer work that I do with Stand Up Canada, and I say this every time, we are always that which we seek. So I'm nobody special. I'm standing up here because I realize the person that I'm looking to save to save myself is me. And so I say this to everybody. Please, you have to look within yourself. We're greater than we've been taught to believe. Yes. Yeah. That's the ultimate truth. The person that we're seeking is ourselves. So, all of the information that we have with Stand Up Canada, we deal with absolute love and compassion. And because we want to empower all Canadians to know what their rights are so that they can stand up for their rights and defend themselves legally. We don't want anybody to give up hope.
Yes, never. In our greatest effort right now, uh, we're announcing that we're taking a legal action on the, it's an unlawful business policy. Has anybody seen the signs? No mask, no entry on business doors? What do you think about that? Well, you know what? It's unlawful. Those mask exemptions are written in the law. And not only that, there's a secondary condition that says, guess what? You don't have to even prove that you meet those conditions to have a mask exemption. But some businesses are taking it upon themselves to write their own policies. And those policies are hurting Canadians. Yes, people are being assaulted, psychologically abused. Hospitalized. That's awful. You know, it's turning into a second, they're turning Canada into a second class uh, tier of society and we have said no enough is enough enough is enough there's nobody better to take on this challenge than stand up Canada people were coming to us all the time thousands on our Facebook telling us their stories hundreds writing to us with the most awful things that they'd happened and you know we I was looking around for who's going to challenge this who's going to do it and I realized oh here we go again no it's going to be us because we're the ones Yes. We have a table set up with our legal challenge. And so for the first time, we are selling t-shirts and hats to fund our legal challenge because we need everybody's support. And everybody here that's not wearing a mask, you'll benefit from this win because it will create a major legal precedent in Ontario. And then we plan to go Canada-wide when we win this. Go Canada! Good job, Paula. That was Paula Tucci from Stand Up Canada. Welcome Canada, welcome freedom, and welcome to the Supreme Court where we're going to stand and assert our freedoms on every Canada Day, on every day. And thank you, my Pastor Michael, for that uh, lovely introduction. And, and he has. Uh, we've had lots of discussions, lots of debates, uh, and they've all been thoughtful. And this is one of the, the last 16 months has been, been a dark time for very many people. It's, Canada's been on a very dangerous path for 16 months. But there is a silver lining throughout that. And that is the wonderful people we meet in Canada, here today and every day. Canadians are wonderful people. I wanted just to share a couple of thoughts on this Canada Day. Because each one of us has our own history. Each one of us has our own story. And my story, I'll share with you. 200 years ago, my wife's ancestors left indentured servitude in Scotland. And they settled in Lanark County 200 years ago in 1821. And they left a, a life of hardship and, and like I said, indentured servitude. And they sail on a ship, and they landed and arrived in Lanark County. And the town that they built, where those settlers arrived, they called Hopetown. And Hopetown it really is the spirit of Canada. Canada that gives us hope if we work hard, if we stand for freedom, for responsibility and faith. We can always have our own hope town here in Canada. Yeah. And, and my family comes from Newfoundland. And 
I guess it's a little bit in my nature. My ancestors jumped a fishing ship and landed. Uh, and you weren't allowed to do that back in the late 1700s. But they jumped ship and they made a life on that hard rock of fishing and forestry. And they landed in a place called Trinity Bay. Interesting. Hope Town on one side and Trinity Bay on the other. And they settled in a little safe outport which they called their new harbor. Their new harbor. They left a life of hardship and indentured servitude. And they came and they created a new life for themselves in Newfoundland. My own parents emigrated to, New to Canada just prior to Confederation. And they saw Canada as a land of hope, a land of freedom. And they came here. And my dad learned how to fix TVs. And we had a little TV shop here in Ottawa. And he raised nine children with my mother. Fixing TVs. And, and they prospered. And they succeeded. And, and all my brothers and sisters, we all did well. Well, other than me getting into politics, I guess. <laughs> All the rest have, a, have an honest living. <laughs> but, but that's, you know, each one of us has this story. There's over 35 million lovely stories of Canada here. And they're in with each and every one of us. All of us are derived and come from families who sought out freedom and responsibility. And we can see by the names that they chose. They chose faith. They chose their journey on that foundation of faith. And we know that freedom and responsibility is derived. It is the currency, not of government. Government's currency may be taxes and debt and inflation. The currency of faith is freedom and responsibility. We're working hard. I am pleased. We've been working hard for a long time. But it's bearing fruit. Thank you, Randy. Need some water. We started the In the Lockdown Caucus with a few. A few people that are here today like Maxine and Derek and Steve and Daryl. And we grew from a small, small group and it's growing every day. We know this dark path that Canada has taken us on needs to have a unified political opposition and a home for freedom loving Canadians we're building that we're building it with your support we are having many discussions I hope soon God willing we find a way to give 
every freedom-loving Canadian a home, whether it's in municipal, provincial, or federal politics, some place where you can cast your vote, where you can speak out freely and know that you'll be respected and that our elected representatives will not just be politicians, but they'll be men and women who stand on integrity and who do what they say they're going to do. Help us get there. We need it. We need to find a way for Canadians, whether it's in the streets or in our homes or in our restaurants or in the ballot box that we can always stand up and show that we are proud, we are free, and we are faithful. Thank you very much. I mentioned that I've met many great people in the last 16 months. And I want to introduce one of those wonderful fellas next. He's man, the first time I ever, and probably that was the first time for him as well, that a politician and a preacher found the same pulpit to stop, talk from. And he's a, Pastor Henry Hildebrand, my brother in freedom, my brother in faith, please come on up, take the microphone. I am overwhelmed with joy to be back in Ottawa. When I saw those planes fly overhead, I thought that's what we are doing. We're flying in V-shape. Some, sometime I have to be in the front, sometime you have to be in the front. And we try to make it as easy as possible for the next one. But we fly in V-shape, standing for victory. I immigrated to Canada in 1985. I drove here with a 1975 Ford Monarch. It didn't have a speedometer cable that was working, no seat belts, and many other things wrong with it, but we made it to Canada. Had a little boy standing beside me on the seat. He was quite, not quite two years old. That was this boy here. I was bringing him to a beautiful, beautiful country. In those days, becoming an immigrant here wasn't very difficult. And not long after, I became a Canadian citizen. And when they gave me that Canadian citizenship card, in that room, there was a book. And I have fallen in love with that book, so much so that I stand on this book, life or death. In Deuteronomy 4 verse 9 it says only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life but teach them thy sons and thy sons sons and by the grace of God I'm doing that I'm teaching that to my son and I'm my son's son. And here's my son's son. This is my oldest grandson. I'm messing up his video right now. I'm teaching him, grandson, go by this. 
Going by this, son, you will never go wrong. You will never go wrong. This is what you do. You can go back to your position. If you see the videos messed up, I did it. I get a blame for a lot these days. This is just a small thing. Marcus Tullius Cicero said many, many years ago, to be ignorant of what occurred before you, before you were born, is to remain always a child. For what is the worth of human life unless it is, wo unless it is woven into the life of our ancestors by the records of history? Woodrow Wilson said 100 years ago, a nation which does not remember what it was yesterday does not know what it is today nor what it is trying to do. We are trying to do a futile, a worthless thing if we do not know where we came from or what we have been about. Yeah. About a hundred years ago, about the same time when Woodrow Wilson said those words, our beautiful parliament that you see to your left here, during the same time, our parliament buildings were being reconstructed after a devastating fire on February 3rd, 1916. A part of our beautiful parliament building is the Peace Tower. Look over there where you see the clock. Way on top of that, that tower is called the Peace Tower. I've been around it, I've admired it, I've been up on it all the way to the top. And on this parliament building, there is 25 Bible verses engraved. Yeah. 25 Bible verses, folks. And I'm supposed to get fined for believing the Bible? Shame on you! Yeah. I'm a little rough around the edges. I've given up all hope that it will change. I'm just a little upset when there's 25 Bible verses engraved in the parliament and they act like they have never heard of God. Three Bible verses have been carved in stone on the exterior of the Peace Tower. The most well-known of those three verses is also Canada's motto. By the way, I am proud to be a Christian and a Canadian. Yeah. You won't wipe that out of me that easy. Yeah. Find me, jail me, kill me, do whatever you want. I stand on the solid word of God. The reason, the reason we are what we are is because of the precious word of God. Because we were founded on that. We recognize the supremacy of God. That's nothing new. That's right on the charter. That's right on the Bill of Rights. It's all in there. I know my stuff. Hello. Canada's motto. Would you like to know Canada's motto? It is, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea. It's engraved on the Peace Tower. But the verse which most people will see when they approach the Peace Tower, I don't know why I'm shaking, I'm not nervous. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. The verse which most people will see when they approach the Peace Tower is, Give the King thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the King's Son. That's all we're asking. That's all we're asking. Give us righteousness. On the west side. Now, here we go. Here we go. Look at the Peace Tower. The west side facing us right now, facing the Supreme Court. Would you like to know what's engraved in stone on there, on the Peace Tower? Yeah. I'm not making this up. I'm letting you know, lest we forget. We are cursed if we forget those things. It says... 
Where there is no vision, the people perish. I am here to say this afternoon, if we lose our vision, if we lose our foundation, we're done. We're done. We're cursed. Anybody recognizes this? Even from far away, you know what this is? I was so proud when I got it the first time. I felt I could jump all over the world, do whatever I wanted. I'm a Canadian! Now I can't even arrive in Canada with this and get through the airport unharassed. Or what's the word? I don't know how to say it. They attack you as you come back to Canada with a valid Canadian passport. On our very passport, the front page is the Royal Coat of Arms of Canada. Today is Canada Day. We may as well tell you how beautiful Canada is. I love this country. When I brought my son here, I felt like him and I could conquer the world. We're Canadians. I felt like we could invite the whole world. Come, there's religious freedom here. Here you can serve God. Amen. In the coat of arms on my passport, it's a valid passport. On my valid passport is the coat of arms. On the coat of arms it says, Amari Usque Amari. I speak Spanish. I have a Latin base. So this is Latin. It says, Amari Usque Amari, which means direct quote from the Bible, from sea to sea. Yeah. Yeah. Another quote on my passport, it contained in the royal coat of arms, they see that antes meliorem patriam, which means they desire a better country. Yeah. Where is that? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16. You can tell I'm a preacher. They all used to act like preachers, not like devils. Oops, sorry. <laughs> they, they all, they all used to know this. They all knew that without this we're done. The very wise King yeah. Solomon said, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. 25 Bible verses engraved in that parliament building. Remove not the ancient landmarks. I know we're very smart in 2021, but when you remove the foundation of a building, you're done. The whole thing collapses. Canada right now is collapsing as we speak. But we won't let it, we will stand on July 1st. The very landmarks of our nations are, are of our nation are being tempered with as I speak. The very fabric of our society is being torn. Our governments presently allow unelected health officials to force our judges to turn law-abiding citizens into criminals. Our governments presently allow unelected health officials to jail our pastors, to lock our church houses, and fine the churches hundreds and thousands of dollars. For what? For what? For the crime of worshiping God according to the word of God. We're worshiping God according to the word to the word of God. We're worshiping God according to the Canadian Charter of Rights. We're worshiping God according to the Bill of Rights. And we're worshiping God according to the 25 scriptures in, in, engraved at the Parliament building. Yeah. I thought in Canada we were innocent until proven guilty. 
I am right now, I have a fine of $273,500 on my head because I preach and get people saved. I now have to, I now have to contact Cuba and Poland and Russia and ask them for advice. How could we get religious freedom in Canada? I messed up all my papers here. Here we go. So, may the God of heaven have mercy on your souls. I'm looking towards the parliament. May God have mercy on your souls. And may, may we pray like Daniel prayed. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by the departing from the precepts and from thy judgments. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray this afternoon that you would forgive our sins in this nation. Father, help us to repent, Lord, to recognize that we have left the precepts. But Father, I thank you for these people on this lawn right here. Father, we recognize that something is wrong. And Father, we will stand by your grace until the end. Father, we thank you for strength. We thank you for courage. Bless every single one that's here and help us, oh God, to fight the battle until we are done. God bless you. Amen. How are you doing? Are there any Canadian patriots out there anywhere? Can I hear it now? Or? Can I hear a shout? So listen, I'm so glad to speak here today. I know it's getting hot and I know we've heard from so many good people and I was enjoying every single word I heard from our friends earlier today. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are on my heart. When I was getting ready for this last night, someone asked me, Derek, are you, are you nervous? There, there could be thousands of people there tomorrow. Are you nervous to address these people? And I said, I'm not nervous in the least. I'm speaking and amongst friends, and I'm not the least bit nervous. I'm so happy to be here, and I think that today is a significant day that will go down in history. We're staring at a house right now that is occupied by people who do not care about Canada. <laughs> they care about themselves, they care about their careers, they care about uh, their fancy ideas that have, that have put Canada in a place that if we don't turn around, it will never recover. This morning, I was so proud. My, my, I was tingling as I was walking across the bridge. And I saw all our friends, our brothers and sisters from Quebec coming over. Can I hear my friends from Quebec? The current government likes to say that Canadians are divided, that the French hate the English, that the West hates the East, that people with different color of skin hate other people with different colors of skin. It's lies. Our friends in Quebec are our brothers and sisters. And I feel closer to them than I do to these people over in English Canada that are putting us under tyranny and under rule. <laughs> we have, a, mo we have a, a, a common movement, a great patriotic movement, the greatest patriotic movement this country has ever seen. And it's made up of all kinds of people, French people, English people, old people, young people, men, women, people with all different tones of skin. And I'm proud to see it. I'm proud to see the flags. I'm proud to see the patriotism. Give it up for my family. My family came all the way out here to celebrate Canada Day with us. That's right. That's right. They, they asked me to speak a little bit about our history of liberty, the privileges of parliament that we have, 
And I really like the, the talk that Pastor Henry gave where he spoke about the different Bible verses that are on the Peace Tower. And all of that is true. And I just want to speak a little bit about the privileges that parliamentarians have. There is privileges that I have based on five or six hundred years of strife and bloodshed wherein no one can keep me from entering the doors of that house over there. No one can prevent me from speaking on any subject in that house over there. If there is bells ringing for a vote or some other parliamentary duty that I have to do and I'm racing to get there and the police pull me over, they actually have to let me go so that I can do my parliamentary duties. <laughs> this was a right that was fought for in our English, our British history of freedom here, where the king at times would prevent the parliamentarians from going into the House of Commons. <laughs> and the parliamentarians were viewed as the direct voice of the commons, of the people, the common people, you and me. And they fought so that nothing could prevent them from going into there to do their duty. <laughs> And those rights still exist today, yet the majority of our, our parliamentarians have been silenced, not by rule of law, but by pressure, political pressure, career pressure. There is nothing, there is nothing preventing all 338 parliamentarians from speaking on any subject that they choose. Nothing at all. The only thing that's stopping them is their own uh, ignorance, uh, uh, self uh, looking out for their careers, their own um, uh, desire to play as a team within their own party structure. There is nothing preventing them from asking questions, from doing events on Parliament Hill to shed light on what we're seeing. They're hypocrites! They are hypocrites. Two weeks ago today, I held a press conference on Parliament Hill. <laughs> there were doctors, there were regular Canadians, there were other professors and health professionals that were reaching out to me. They wanted to have a voice. They weren't able to talk on the mainstream media. They weren't getting any uh, uh, person or entity to allow them to tell their story. So I held an official press conference here to let them tell their story. <laughs> Within two days, that became the most watched CPAC political video of all time. It is now more than double the most watch CPAC video of all time. It's well over 600,000 separate views. It's only been up for two weeks. In the midst of that press conference, my Facebook live stream was shut down right in the middle of it. An official parliamentary function was shut down right in the middle of it because the powers that be didn't like what we were saying. I had, a I had two tenured professors from major universities here in Ontario. I had a medical doctor, a frontline care worker who we see all the signs about there telling us about what they're seeing. And yet, that wasn't good enough for Facebook. It is shameful that, if, that Canadians are unable to share official parliamentary functions in this country. I had people show me screenshots. They would try to share the YouTube link from CPAC and Twitter or Facebook wouldn't let them. What kind of a country are we living in that is enabling this form of censorship in this country? It is absolutely frightening. It is absolutely troubling. 
And I raised this issue in the House of Commons only a few days later, two sitting days later. And I asked the Liberals if it was right that Canadians were unable to share the most watched CPAC video of all time. And the Liberals basically said, well, if Facebook doesn't like what you're saying, then you must be a pretty bad guy, Derek. That's pretty bad. Now, since when should, is Facebook to come before the representatives of the people and the people of Canada? If not even the police can stop me from doing my duty in the House of Commons, why is Facebook shutting down democracy in Canada? We have a history, we have a long history of freedom in this country and the, and the democratic roots are there. They're being stifled, they're being pressed by party uh, dynamics, by censorship, by uh, uh, career opportunities. But our grassroots democratic rights remain. And I believe sincerely that we're at the threshold of a time where we will look to this day and we will see that it was a turning point as we move forward to have true patriotic Canadians occupy that house over there. Yeah. I'm declaring it today and you will see it happen. <laughs> I am absolutely confident that Canadians across this country are not divided. I have been coast to coast. I have met with tens of thousands of Canadians across this country. And so many of us are united on the same principles, the principles of integrity in our government, the principles of telling the truth, the principles of standing together and putting Canadians first. There's nothing wrong with that. I firmly believe that what we're seeing here and at other places across this country is the beginning of the greatest patriotic movement this country has ever seen. And as we look back at this Canada today, we will see it as a turning point, a turning point where French people, English people, old people, young people, men, women, black, white, every other color, will say, this country is united. I don't care what Justin Trudeau and other people are telling us. We are united. And we will not stop, and we will not retreat until we have accomplished what we've set out to do in this country. I have a few questions for you to end off. It's a hot day. We have we want to shake hands and mingle and enjoy the day. I want to ask you, will we tolerate the lies anymore? No. Will we tolerate the corruption anymore? No. Will we tolerate selling Canada out to the highest bidder anymore? No. Then pledge with me today that we will not stop, we will, we will not retreat until we have made Canada the bastion of liberty and freedom that God ordained it to be. I want to say thank you for being here. God bless you. God bless Canada. Never stop fighting. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Oh, you're gonna miss another. True leader in Canada, Derek Sloan.
So I have a step to give my speech now, but I'm going to hold off a little bit so I can make way for an individual who talks a lot of talk, but this guy walks a whole lot of walk. So without further ado, Chris Scott. Our stay-at-home order ended, so here I am. I'm allowed to be out, I'm allowed to talk to you. I don't think I'm allowed to mingle in that gigantic crowd over there, which is why I've been hiding out on the steps. But Canada Day is here. Last year we had over 30,000 people here. This year we have less, why? Because now we got all these people that got vaccinated and they think this is gonna end. They think that because they did their part, everything's gonna be okay. We had some politicians giving you lip service letting you think everything's gonna be okay. But what's the reality of the situation? I warned you last year of the vaccine passport. I was a crazy conspiracy theorist because there was no such thing. Now that it has become a law in our country, I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist because I question that it's against our best interests. This entire pandemic has been told that it's about our health and safety as they close our business, remove our rights, take our finances, ruin our future of our children and our country. They keep telling us it's for our own good. They keep telling us the only way to get out of this is to comply. Then when we complied and we got the vaccine, now we have a vaccine passport. Now what's next? Guess what, everybody? Just like I warned you last year, they're already telling you if you're vaccinated, you still have to wear a mask. They're already talking about scary sounding variants, the Delta variant. And now they have something called the Delta Plus variant. And, all right, what is this, a video game? And guess what they're saying about the Delta Plus variant? Their political speak is already telling you it's resistant to antibodies. That's another say, way of saying it's resistant to the vaccine. So that's why when we get this little freedom in summer that everybody's enjoying and everybody's complacent and everybody lowered their guard because they got allowed to take off their mask for a month, September's gonna roll around and all those people that got vaccinated and waited for their second jab and are now suffering the consequences that we call adverse reactions, they're gonna say, oh my God, all these people that are vaccinated are really getting sick because of the Delta Plus Plus variant. It's so, it's so new to the vaccine. And the Delta Plus Plus variant was created by, guess what? All you non-vaccinated people. That's what it came from, of course. It came from the non-vaccinated people and it spread into a, such a dangerous mutation that all our vaccinated good citizens will now have to be back on restrictions, have their masks on, and have their freedom taken away just like before. Only now they've taken an injection multiple times that's untested, unsafe, and it's gonna make them sick. And that's where we are in 2021. And it doesn't end there. What do they have next? They just announced that they're banning gas cars in Canada yeah. by 2035. Remember that old dog? Oh, you're going to own nothing and be happy? That's what they're talking about. They already took your businesses. They already took your jobs. Now they want to take your homes. They're going to have all these wonderful new environmental regulations. You're going to hear, build back better. That's their way of saying your property is going to be our property. And for all you people that still have a job and still have a business and still own property, they have a wonderful way to get that from you. It's called a government-insured reverse mortgage. And they're going to acknowledge with all this inflation from all these people going broke and all this money printed and all this money being given out, they're going to acknowledge that all these people that are trying to retire aren't going to be able to retire on their pension. So they're going to tell you, take the government insured reverse mortgage. You're going to be getting thousands and thousands of dollars every month for the rest of your retirement. You're going to have so much money, you can leave that to your kids. The only catch is, at the end, the government now owns your property. And that's what they're doing. In the United States of America, the, in, the real estate market is booming. Guess what? 25% of all new home sales are being bought by one giant corporation called BlackRock Group. That's the bank conglomerate group. They own trillions of dollars of assets, and they're buying up entire neighborhoods overpriced to put you out of the market, put the average American and Canadian out of the market so they can do these really high density projects. They want you in 20 years from now to have no money, no property, own no car. If you're a single person, you're gonna be living in 150 square feet. You may or may not have your own bathroom depending on your social status. When you wanna to go to work, if you're lucky enough not to work from home, you're going to go outside and you're going to jump on an e-bike that's waiting there for you. 
It's not going to be one you own. It's going to be one that's owned by the government. You're going to scan your wrist. Your digital wallet's going to come up. And you're going to see if you have enough credits in your bank account to rent this bike for the 15 minutes it takes for you to get your job. The rest of the time, you're going to spend living at home. In your building, that's where you're going to eat, sleep, work for the most of you. Your Starbucks, your hairdresser, your grocery store, your clothing store. You're never leaving your block. Air travel is going to be restricted even worse than it is now. And not by vaccines, by pricing you out of the market. By doing things that make it so you have less and less and less freedom. You've already given up every freedom that our ancestors fought and died for in the millions of people. Today is Canada Day. And they tried to destroy our national identity to the point that they tried to make you ashamed to even celebrate Canada Day. They tried to say Canada Day is cancelled. Cancelled. Just like Christmas was cancelled. Just like Thanksgiving was cancelled. Now all of a sudden Canada's cancelled. That's what they're trying to tell you. And they try to sow division. This is why I'm holding this here. This is for the natives. Canada was a native country. Yes, but we are all Canadians. The indigenous are no more, no less Canadian than the rest of us. We have been here for 250 years. Canada is not a country of systemic racism like they try to make us believe. We are united. They wanted to fight us, but we are united. They wanted to fight us every single way they can. They want to say, people scared of the virus are not scared. People wearing masks are not wearing masks. Racial division, religious division, political division. It's all bullshit. They try to make me look like a crazy person. They try to make me look violent. They try to give you the impression that not to listen to me. That's why I wrote this book. It can't be taken out of context. It can't be misconstrued. It can't be misquoted. And that's why Amazon made this the first book in the history of the world that they approved for sale and then banned the day before it was supposed to go on sale. Never before in history. And right now you can get Hitler's book on Amazon. You can get a book called Just Say No to Vaccines. But Just Say No with Chris Sky that has one chapter that talks about vaccines and nine other chapters that talk about exactly what's going on in our country today, they don't want you to read it. Why? Because it's going to tell you what's really going on. It's going to tell you what's really going to happen. It's going to tell you what you need to do to get out of this. It's called United Non-Compliance. We all got together. We are
Life is life can be hard. Are you and hinting at the timing of uh, the recovery of those bodies? That's, for example, one thing that I find very, very strange, because that these these children have been murdered. No, no, has that's been, part of has been part known of me. a long no, time, they, they, right? They, we found unmarked graves. Yes, there's no evidence that there was murder. Okay, no well, evidence that there was murder. Then, then let's, let's be truthful. Let me retract that. Thank you for retracting that. Um, I just feel that it's important to say okay. the timing is really off. I've got to go back. We've got another. Call me a racist. This is what they're doing to all of you. The 
because they want, don't want us pointing fingers at the system, they want us pointing fingers at each other. We got a timeline, I know, I apologize. But I just want you guys to know that I appreciate all and each and every one of you for standing up for the truth. Because all of this that's going on is the beginning of Nazi Germany. And if you don't understand that, and you're continuing to wear your mask, you just get ready for the Gestapo that's going to show up at your doorstep. I love you all. We're all brothers and sisters. All lives matter to the great, to the one who created us. And I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emmy. Why don't we play a little bit of music for a moment? Folks, we're going to just take a brief intermission right now, and we're going to have some music played, and we'll come back together in a few minutes. can stand me up at the gates of hell, but I won't back down. Gonna stand my ground, won't be turned around. And I'll keep this world from dragging me down, gonna stand my ground. fight a lot. It's what we do. Here's the deal. Chris Sky is going to speak. I've guaranteed him that he will speak. It'll be in the second half and he will have his chance to speak. That's where we're at. It's all good. We'll carry on with the program. is a man who's going to be named Mark Carney. He works extensively with international banks. His primary goal of concern is to start the digital currency. Once you have a digital currency, a digital identity, and a vaccine passport all tied together, the government literally owns you and can turn you off with the flick of a switch. Do you understand what that means? You're a flip on a screen, they flip a button, and you're done. You can't access your money, you can't travel, you can't work, you're literally eliminated from society with the flick of a switch. And that's where this is headed. That's where they intend to bring you. And that's why I wrote this book called Just Say No to teach you how to just say no. We have a choir that wants to sing about Jesus. How about we do that right now? Let's do it. I'm going to finish off my speech and we're going to finish off with this choir and then everybody's going to march over to Parliament Hill and we're going to carry on this celebration. We're going to set up a, a, an area where people can meet me if you have questions. My books are going to be there, our hats are going to be there, our shirts are going to be there. We're going to have a festival. We're going to make this a party because this is Canada Day and we are supposed to celebrate our country. We supposed to feel like prisoners in our country. We are supposed to feel like kings and queens in our country. 
and that's what we're going to feel like again. Everybody, I love you, Canada, but you got to stand up for yourself. America is wide open. My wife has spent three months in Florida. It's paradise. People say, oh, the grass is not greener on the other side. Oh, hell yes, it is. It is. We have Bill C-36. We have Bill C-10. We have on our businesses, we have restrictions on who we can see, where we can go. They don't have any of that over there, and that's why our borders closed. They don't want Canadians going over there and seeing that not even two hours away from us, everything is normal. You see these people here all in a big crowd. That's normal. It's not crazy. You don't need a mask. You don't need to be afraid of each other. Canada, if you do not stand up now. Up later, a window of opportunity gets smaller every single day. But we can win. Israel got rid of the vaccine passport, so can we. All you have to do is one thing: just say no. I love you, Canada. Now There is not a mother, a sister, friend, no brother, no friend of Jesus Christ. He brings you up for me, when we are traveling, he gives life a foreign name. I want to bring to the stage to now, right now, a veteran by the name of Paul Poulet. Paul. Bonjour tout le monde. Je vais faire une petite partie en français. Merci énormément en cette journée du Canada que vous soyez de l'Ouest. À l'est, peu importe votre couleur, vous êtes Canadiens, vous avez vos droits, tenez-vous debout! C'est drôle, hein? Pour une heure de vol d'avion, on a énormément d'heures de mécano. Il n'y avait aucune fête du Canada d'organiser parce que le premier ministre je vais rester poli parce que lui n'est pas toujours poli avec nous autres. Je voulais pas qu'on se fasse de fête. En même temps que le Haut-Canada a terminé, on a eu un message. Il y a un petit message là-dedans pour les gens qui me demandent si l'armée est en arrière de nous. Regardez ce qui se passe avec les généraux présentement dans les forces armées. Je l'ai enlevé 
en arrivant ici, parce que j'ai fait plusieurs discours au Québec, on m'a fait fermer ailleurs avec mon béret. Présentement, on se bat pour nos droits et nos libertés. Je ne me fermerai pas la gueule. Jamais! Moi, je ne suis pas lui qui va se cacher en courant après mon discours. Je vais me tenir debout, Christy. Excusez des sacs, mais ça vient du cœur. À un moment donné, vous, vous êtes tous responsables. Everybody's responsible of their self. Stand up! Everybody, please stand up! Parlez-vous de qui? Hein? Nos enfants, dans plusieurs années, on sait présentement qu'ils ont des problèmes psychologiques. Qu'est-ce qu'on va devenir si on n'est pas capable de se lever de bout pour nos enfants? Si vous n'êtes pas capable de vous lever de bout pour vos enfants, if you cannot raise or stand up for your kids, you're gonna die. No, we're gonna live together. Tout le monde ensemble, tout le monde uni. C'est terminé. Ils ont essayé de nous séparer avec la division des frontières puis des langues. C'est pas nous, on a vécu la même affaire des forces armées. Le 22, le PPC LR, le RCR, on a essayé de nous mettre en guerre. Non, la langue n'est pas une barrière. We're all friends, on est tous des amis. All Canadians! S'il vous plaît, please, pour ceux-là qui voient un peu les couleurs, ça a peut-être été manigancé, mais le Canada a besoin d'aide. Qu'est-ce que ça signifie les drapeaux? On est la résistance. Vous êtes la résistance. Levez-vous debout. Stand up, everybody, come on. Ce n'est pas des gens qui mènent notre pays. Monsieur Legault, vous avez sûrement vu ma face avec le béret marron. Avec le tapon de caméra qui est ici, Monsieur Trudeau, regardez ma face avec mon béret. Parce que je vois le bien de moi. Merci énormément. Thanks everybody to stand up for the kids. I have something more to say. I love you all. Je ne devais pas partager des choses personnelles, mais vu qu'on est entre amis, j'ai essayé de convaincre mes parents de ne pas se faire vacciner. Ils ont eu leur deuxième dose mardi passé. Mon père est à l'hôpital depuis vendredi. On ne fait jamais le deuil d'un parent. Mais je peux vous le jurer. On m'avait fait fermer la gueule. It's over, c'est fini. Merci beaucoup tout le monde, merci.
Liberté! 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 All right, thanks very much, Paul Poulet. I think I said that right. Prairie boy trying to speak French is pretty funny. Speaking of being a prairie boy and being in Ottawa, I was here last year, and the most one of the most powerful elements of last year was when the French came from Quebec and they and they marched down Wellington to join what we were doing. Very powerful. And at that time, I was working with a fellow by the name of Steve Lartis, and I hope I said that right. And he came across to me as just an absolute stellar patriot. So of course we had to work with Steve on this Canada Day. And I'm telling you, another really powerful moment for me in my life was meeting with the French Patriots on the bridge halfway and coming here together to take our country back. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Thanks, Steve. Pour les Anglais, on dit Cut that cable! Je suis euh, très honoré aujourd'hui de venir ici pour vous faire un speech en avant du bureau euh, suprême de la corruption canadienne. Entre deux drapeaux du Canada à l'envers. I'm honored to be here to make a speech for you between two Canadian flags upside down. Et pour ceux qui n'ont pas encore compris le sens, on n'est pas en train de souiller notre drapeau. Les drapeaux à l'envers, c'est un signe universel de détresse. Pour leur montrer qu'on le sait, qu'on est en territoire occupé par l'ennemi. Puis on n'est pas ici pour se laisser faire, on est ici pour se tenir debout. Puis tous les slogans que j'ai entendus, just say no, stand up. Ce que vous avez vu de notre arrivée, ça a l'air bien solennel et dangereux, mais dans le fond, c'est une belle gang de chums qui sont venus vous montrer c'est quoi une fraternité. Les Farfadets au Québec, c'est un mouvement d'hommes et de femmes en pleine expansion. C'est une fraternité de gens si serrés qui se tiennent debout pour leurs droits et qui prennent soin des oubliés de cette crise. On n'a pas d'organisme, on n'a pas d'OBNL, on n'a rien de tout ça. On se fait même pas de CA, on n'a pas d'ordre jour. On s'en calisse des procédures, tu comprends-tu? Nous autres, on a un cœur puis on a envie de le partager. Puis dans la dernière année, on a remis plus de 60 000 dans la rue à des oubliés de ce système, à des gens qui mangent pas, à des gens qui peuvent pas s'occuper de leur famille, de leurs enfants. On essaye d'aider tout le monde qu'on peut. Merci à vous parce que c'est grâce à vous qu'on peut les aider. On est ici aujourd'hui pour notre liberté! Puis euh, on en a eu euh, <rire> on en a eu un bel exemple de ce qui se passe dans notre vie de tous les jours. On l'a vu sur le stage qui se passe dans notre vie de tous les jours. Je m'excuse pour les politiciens qui sont dans la place, là, mais ça fait longtemps qu'on ne croit plus à la politique. Ça fait longtemps qu'on ne croit plus aux politiciens. Les politiciens, ils viennent ici pour nous plaire, parce qu'ils veulent qu'on les vote pour eux autres. Puis après ça, ils vont se coller de nous autres pendant quatre ans. C'est assez! On en a eu la preuve aujourd'hui. Les politiciens, tu les donnes cinq minutes, ils en prennent douze calices. Puis après ça, on coupe la parole à des gars qu'on veut entendre. On ne réglera pas les problèmes de la politique par les politiciens. On va régler les problèmes de la politique par un mouvement social qui va 
va mettre en place une politique sociale par le peuple, pour le peuple. Comment ça a été carré qu'on fasse vendre une simili démocratie? C'est pas une démocratie qu'on vote aux 4 ans puis qu'on se fait crisser de notre gueule pendant 4 ans. Dans une vraie démocratie, on a notre mot à dire. Puis dans une vraie démocratie, on a envie de leur dire que c'est assez. Il n'est pas question qu'on travaille à changer de parti. Il faut changer de système. Ils sont bien cute ceux qui sont venus se parler ici aujourd'hui, faire bla 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 bla. Hein. Excuse, mais j'embarque plus, moi. Puis euh, je vais vous faire un aveu. J'ai voté pour le go la dernière fois. Je suis désolé. Je me suis fait avoir, moi, avec, parce qu'encore une fois, il y a quelqu'un qui était capable de se lever pour venir nous dire ce qu'on voulait entendre. Puis depuis ce temps-là, on se fait changer nos lois, on se fait enlever notre liberté. Il a ouvert la Charte des droits et libertés, il a ouvert la Constitution canadienne, puis même l'opposition ne dit rien. Ça va prendre un mouvement populaire pour les crisser dehors! Ce mouvement-là est en marche, puis encore une fois, je vais vous parler de votre responsabilité à chacun. On a tous la responsabilité d'aller éduquer nos proches. Arrêtez de lui parler de la crise COVID, là. les hypochondriacs qui comprennent à rien. Ils écoutent TVA, ils écoutent LCM, puis ils comprennent à rien. Ils dorment au gaz, on les aime, puis on les accepte comme ils sont. Allez leur demander pourquoi ils ont, ils ont repris confiance à la politique. Parce qu'avant la crise du COVID, personne n'avait confiance en politique. Tout le monde était rendu au bout du rouleau. Les couples sont rendus à trois jobs, les enfants se font aller à la garderie, claquer dans le cou, puis nos parents sont en train de mourir, la couche pleine de mort, c'est pas dans ce système-là que je veux vieillir! Ah! Enfin, ils vont me politiciens, je ne regarderai pas l'heure. de qui tu baises, de qui tu pries, tu pries pas, de ce que tu manges ou si tu manges pas, je m'en calisse. Yeah. Un peuple uni, toujours sur la main 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 Je vais continuer de traîner mon drapeau en avant jusqu'à temps qu'on rentre au Parlement, dans les deux parlements qu'on y a le botte et le cul pour les sortir dehors. Parce qu'il n'y a, pas... a pas encore un politicien qui a fait ses preuves. Même l'opposition n'est plus de l'opposition. Il reste juste un parti dans nos deux parlements. Puis même les partis qui travaillent dans la rue aujourd'hui, on commence à dire savoir votre game, arrêtez de la jouer, Chris. Il y a une chose que je me suis dit pendant que j'étais en arrière, je m'excuse de mettre le feu pour ceux qui aiment les politiciens d'aujourd'hui, là, que tu te dire, je t'ai gars de même, là. Il y a une chose que je me suis dit pendant qu'on était en arrière, c'est que les politiciens qui se présentent ici, ils ont besoin de nous. Mais le contraire est encore approuvé! C'est nous autres, le boss! C'est nous autres qui payent leur salaire! Puis c'est nous autres qui devraient leur expliquer comment on veut vivre au Canada et au Québec! Ce que je vous invite tous à garder vos responsabilités, à vous tenir debout, à accepter la confrontation avec ceux qui veulent vous confronter. Acceptez-les. Ils ne gênent pas eux autres pour nous traiter de toutes sortes de calices d'affaires. Mais nous autres, on va... On va euh, 
On va être traité avec amour, mais on va accepter la confrontation et on va leur expliquer notre point de vue. Parce que c'est pas normal qu'on gagne encore de moins en moins, puis que ça coûte encore de plus en plus. C'est pas normal. L'argent, ça va tout en haut. Il en manque pas d'argent. Il manque d'intelligence pour la gérer. Il manque d'humanité pour la donner des bonnes mains. Puis ça, on va leur montrer. On va leur exiger s'il faut. Restez debout! Sur ça, j'ai assez pris de votre temps. Comme je vous dis tout le temps, je nous aime. Le mouvement des farfadets au Québec est en pleine expansion. T'es invité, il n'y a pas de carte de membre, il n'y a, a pas de... il n'y a, a rien. Ici. On est un mouvement d'entraide, on est un mouvement d'amour. On a besoin de toi. Puis plus les mouvements vont prendre d'ampleur, plus on va déranger. Puis plus on va déranger, plus ils vont sortir de là. Parce qu'on est tannés. Levez-vous de bout, rejoignez des fraternités, regroupez-vous, crissez-vous de la langue, de la couleur, de la peau. De... On s'en fout. C'est nous contre eux. Une femme de cœur, une avocate du Québec, une avocate du barreau qui se tient debout, Gloriane Blais. dans chacune des familles pour sauver l'humanité. Pour que chacune des personnes qui commencent à se poser une question en parle aux autres. Pour que chacune des personnes qui commencent à s'informer avec des experts indépendants neutres, en parle aux autres. Il n'y a aucune raison, selon moi, de mon expérience, pour ne pas en parler aux autres. Nous formons ensemble une grande humanité. Désirez, désirez-vous est-ce que nous souhaitons faire partie de cette humanité? Est-ce que nous souhaitons tous ensemble, en tant qu'êtres humains, individuellement souverains, faire partie de cette grande humanité? Yes! Et à ce moment-là, il faut accepter notre mission que chacun a, que chaque être humain a, de se lever et de parler. Ce n'est plus le temps de dire « l'autre le fera ». L'autre risquera sa vie. L'autre risquera sa carrière. L'autre risquera sa carrière de 22 ans. L'autre risquera son, sa fortune. L'autre risquera euh, la sécurité pour ses enfants. L'autre risquera sa vie. Ce n'est plus le temps de dire L'autre risquera sa vie. Est-ce qu'on veut faire partie de cette grande humanité sur cette terre? On doit, à ce moment-là, se lever, se poser une première question, s'informer de médias indépendants, d'experts indépendants. Il y en a une tonne comme ça des 
d'experts indépendants. C'est pas ça qui manque. Ce n'est pas ça qui manque. Puis selon le droit de la preuve civile, ce n'est pas le nombre d'experts ou ce n'est pas le nombre de témoins qui vient dire c'est qu'est-ce qui est la vérité. La vérité ne se résume pas au nombre de personnes qui viennent parler. La vérité se retrouve dans l'indépendance et l'intégrité personnelle de la personne. Lorsque on décide, on accepte un avantage au détriment de notre intégrité, on appelle ça, on, on appelle ça de la corruption dans, le, dans la littérature juridique lorsqu'on accepte un avantage au détriment de, de notre intégrité. On appelle ça de la corruption. Lorsqu'on accepte un avantage pour se faire injecter un produit expérimental dans une pandémie qui est fausse, on appelle ça de la corruption envers notre intégrité corporelle. Notre intégrité psychique, notre intégrité co corporelle fait partie de notre intégrité. On mérite chaque être humain mieux que ça. On mérite de s'écouter de s'écouter, d'écouter notre voix intérieure. Nous avons tous, chaque être humain sur la terre, accès à la vérité, accès à la, notre voix intérieure. Nous avons accès à la vérité, chacun, chaque être humain. Lorsqu'on me dit, « Oui, mais Gloriane, euh, t'es pas scientifique, toi. Arrête de penser. <rire> » Ben ici, là, c'est la Cour suprême du Canada. Il y a neuf juges, des êtres humains comme moi, qui ne sont ni experts ni scientifiques. Et tous les juges au Canada font à tous les jours, prennent des, à tous les jours des décisions de nature scientifique. Lorsqu'on a, comme moi, j'ai eu un dossier en obstétrique. Quand il y a des experts en médicaux scientifiques qui sont devant un juge, le juge n'est pas obligé d'écouter ce que les experts disent. Le juge s'instruit. S'instruit des experts d'une partie. S'instruit des experts de l'autre partie. Pas juste d'une partie pour prendre sa décision. Puis dans un jugement, il y a trois sections. L'analyse des faits, l'énoncé du droit et l'application du droit sur les faits. Puis l'évaluation de la crédibilité de l'indépendance des experts et du contenu de ce que les experts sont venus dire à titre d'opinion font partie des faits. Les seuls décideurs sur les faits, c'est le juge, pas avec le droit, c'est le juge avec son intérieur. Si un juge, un être humain comme vous et moi, sont capables, sont capables d'évaluer des faits sur la base d'experts scientifiques. Et je vous le répète, c'est des êtres humains comme vous et moi. On est tous égaux devant Dieu. Bien à ce moment-là, on, on prend exemple sur eux, leur méthode. On prend exemple sur les, les juges et leur formation. On écoute, on écoute les experts d'une partie et de l'autre, les experts des gouvernements et de l'OMS, les experts du peuple, et on analyse et on écoute notre voix intérieure. Moi, je ne vous dis pas, écoutez-moi, Gloriane Blais, je ne vous dis pas, écoutez le voisin. On arrête d'écouter le voisin pour savoir comment on s'habille. On arrête d'écouter le voisin pour savoir comment on se maquille. On arrête d'écouter le voisin pour savoir si je me mets des bottes ou des sandales aujourd'hui. On écoute notre feeling. On écoute notre voix intérieure. Comme les juges se doivent de le faire. Parce que l'impartialité, ce que les journalistes ont aussi l'obligation d'avoir, 
c'est d'avoir autant assez d'ouverture d'esprit pour entendre les deux parties. C'est ça la sensibilité. Alors, est-ce que moi je m'aime assez pour écouter ma voix intérieure? Est-ce que toi, tu t'aimes assez pour écouter ta voix intérieure? Est-ce qu'on s'aime assez pour écouter notre voix intérieure? On est des êtres humains extraordinaires. Tous les êtres humains, c'est des êtres extraordinaires. On nous fait accroire depuis notre enfance qu'on doit suivre la rangée de moutons. Ce n'est pas ça. Ce n'est pas ça d'être des êtres humains avec tout notre potentiel extraordinaire. Retrouvons notre potentiel intérieur et nous connaîtrons la vérité. Et à ce moment-là, on sera capable d'avoir l'ouverture d'esprit pour faire une analyse impartiale des deux parties. Alors, ce n'est pas vrai que nos enfants vont se faire injecter des vaccins, en guillemets, expérimentaux que les phases d'expérimentation ne sont même pas terminées pour court et moyen et long terme. Ce n'est pas vrai qu'on parle d'une pandémie qui n'est pas une pandémie quand on regarde des experts indépendants. Ce n'est pas une pandémie. C'était une grosse, grosse, grosse grippe. Ah, oh, là, les journalistes, ils vont me dire, ah, elle dit que c'est une grosse grippe. Ben, informez-vous. Retrouvez votre corps, mes chers amis. Vous êtes capables, mes chers journalistes. Si j'ai pas été comme ça devant les tribunaux depuis 22 ans, devant des tribunaux qui se devaient d'être impartiaux, ce n'est pas vrai qu'un journaliste va m'impressionner parce qu'il n'aura pas fait ce travail d'impartialité-là, d'ouverture d'esprit et de retourner vers son cœur. Merci beaucoup et au plaisir. so thankful for our speakers so far. We have uh, three more speakers and they're all associated with Liberty Coalition Canada and our professionals against lockdowns. So or dictate, dictated to us. We are Canadians. <laughs> the true North, strong and free, and above all else, our children, or future generation deserve a better world. They are worth all of this fight for the Canada we all know to be true. So with that being said, please feel free to come to us. Our booth is at the end over there. So feel free to come and ask, ask us any questions. And again, thank you all for coming out and merci beaucoup. Thank you, Nordia. Okay, so speaking of children, we have a very important speaker coming up next. So they are our teachers who are looking after our children, the next generations. And they are not happy with what is going on in the school systems. And they are here to stand up for what is right for our children. So welcome Nancy O'Brien to the stage. Thank you, nurses. Hello, Canada. Salut Canada, comment ça va? How are all the kids in the back of the classroom today? I was asked to speak about freedom and what it meant to me. And the fact that I found it really difficult to articulate, I think says everything. How fortunate have I been to just enjoy freedom. But I've also known that freedom does not come easily. Some individuals have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, including my mom's uncle, who she was named after. The symbol of freedom to me has always been our flag and the maple leaf. Ever since I was born in this beautiful country, I've woken each day and I've been able to do what I wanted, go where I wanted, when I wanted to, 
with whom I wanted to speak my mind and to listen to whoever I wanted to. That is freedom. Why am I speaking out? Because I am compelled to. Our kids are not okay. Children and teens who are essentially at zero risk of dying from COVID are being hurt the most by the lockdowns, masking, isolation, and messages of fear. For many kids, school is their safe place. How have they been affected these past 15 months without their safety net and supportive community? Where are the single parents? I, I really commend you. When I was 11, my mom bravely fled an abusive relationship with my four younger siblings and our family dog in tow. Our two bedroom house for six of us was like a castle because it was safe and void of the abuse I witnessed. But it wasn't easy. My amazing mom worked to put food on the table and then took second jobs for extras like Christmas and birthdays. And as the oldest, I had to grow up very fast. There are two things that I know got me through what seemed like an eternity of tough times. One, my faith. And two, caring and supportive teachers who provided a positive space for me to grow and flourish academically and as a person. I joined clubs and I served as bright, a vice president in this last year of high school. I grew up in a country that supported kids like me. All I had to do was put in the work. I had grants and loans so I could attend university. I earned a Bachelor of Science uh, and I put blood, sweat, and tears into also earning a doctor of chiropractic. Me, the poor kid of a single mom of five kids. Thank you, but I am not the only one with a story like this. So what is happening right now to those kids who aren't in clubs, aren't able to connect with their teachers, aren't identified as being neglected or abused. How much of that are we missing? What about the, sorry. What about the kids who have worked the majority of their young lives with the hopes of earning an athletic scholarship? What about them? Can you imagine how your younger self would process this disappointment? Innocence and joy have been robbed from their childhoods and replaced with irrational fears. Graduation and proms, rites of passage were canceled once again. All because the adults in charge put their own fear and agenda before the well-being of kids. I'm happy to tell you I'm not alone. I'm part of Educators for Human Rights, a group of active and retired teachers who see the harms, who see the harms, are taking a stand against it. I'd like to end with a message for all Canadian educators. This was a tough year to work through for sure. There were so many unknowns. Some of you worked for home while having to school your kids at the same time. We get it. But we are who these kids look up to for guidance, for protection, and for role models for critical thinking. The data is clear that kids are not a threat to us. They never have been. Not last year, not this year. We need to stop covering their beautiful faces. We need to welcome them all with open arms 
and provide hope for their future once again. If you need to contact us, please reach out to us at Educators for Human Rights at ProtonMail.com. Happy Canada Day. Shall inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. What a powerful scripture today. That, that verse, my friend, today shows you that your disease, your virus is greater than COVID-19. Take the mask off and breathe in some fresh air, folks. You are free. Breathe some fresh air. You are free. But the Bible says, whom the Son of God sets free shall be free indeed. Free from what? Free from sin. Oh, Jesus said to that woman in John 8, Go and sin no more. Yeah, that's the message. That's the liberating message of the gospel. That your chains can be broken. That your addictions can be gone. The drunkard doesn't drink anymore. They get sobered up. The pot smoker doesn't have to smoke joint after joint after joint. They come to the most high. What's with the what? orange color? Have to buy it. What's He's with the orange color? The price. He's already shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. What's with for the you? orange color of the t-shirt? What are you waiting Watch for? Us, uh, Come to Jesus. Drop down on your knees you wearing an orange t-shirt. And cry out to him. And he'll save you today. Whosoever oh, will. Oh, it is just a an t-shirt. invitation. You know what? God what significance the color orange has? No, it's not the, about uh, saving children. It's in solidarity with oh, the murder children. The yeah. The Holy God. Well, that's why the, that's Paul said, knowing is that why you're the wearing it? terror of the Lord, Lord. Lord is in charge. We yeah. attempt to the Lord, persuade The Lord men. is in yeah, solidarity with the children, today. right? We know that's that's the is Lord, he? The Lord cares for it. Absolutely, he cares for everyone. But that's not why you're wearing oh, the orange shirt, are you? Those dark forces are released. Just, gonna keep just like in medieval ages. Your censorship. It's not working. Your bondage. Your prisonship. Part of white Canada, or are you part this of Indigenous Canada? It's hovering awesome. over you and what? tearing down your liberty. What? But I'm just telling you, there's one of the so white through. Canada or Indigenous Canada. No, I got this to prove. There is one who sits on the throne today. <laughs> can't show that. Huh? Because I can't ID you on. I mean, because. That's my thank stat. you, thank you my, for showing it's me my that. It's my status card. But um, it's a data land. Well, that's what I'm trying to get yeah. out of people. I feel like it's time for an acknowledgement yeah. that this is unceded territory. Yeah. And uh, they took our land. Oh, what about you? See, what are you gonna know with Jesus? This is why I'm trying the to get people to say yeah. I'm wearing an orange T-shirt yeah. today because I want to show the eyes of the world. Oh, uh, there are many eyewitnesses. They saw it. No, he didn't even know. There are many I eyewitnesses did, I that even saw it. It turns out yeah. it's just a very good color to yeah, wear today. I, I had an orange shirt. I shouldn't wear it. Anyways, my name is Aaron. Christian. Nice meeting you. He's victorious. And, um, you know what it says in Romans? I, I ran out of cards. Do you have a card? Do you want me to write down your telephone number? Because I have a channel. I want to show you what I'm going to be making about this. Me, I don't have any technology. No technology. You want to give me your telephone I'm old school. If you're washed in the blood today, you're not yeah, I can give you my number. It's not a cell phone. It's not a cell phone. And communism in the country. No, you don't fear that. You know there's one who sits supreme on the throne today. He rules in the heavens. Amen. You know Amen. what it says? He's going to dash them with a rod of iron like a potter's vessel. He's coming back. He's the rock made without hands. Amen, oh, amen. glory to God. Glory Give him to praise God. today. Amen. Shout him in today. You either fear God what or about you're destined for hell. You're either saved or you're lost. You're what either about, going up or you're going down. What about love and forgiveness? You. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. Yeah, hey, all you're about. either on the broad road Jesus, that leads to destruction love. or you're on the narrow path that leads to life. Oh, friend, today, choose who you will serve. The Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the light. Does me me? The, uh... Nice umbrella.
Did he have an autoimmune disease, Brian? <clears throat> All of that nonsense. Really, eh? And uh, he really did his thing. He really blacked up. He was also just really oh, nice. Yeah, he had a really nice vibe about him. Really nice. This is unseated land, man. You gonna harass me now? Why are you picking me out? I'm a member of the press. Why are you picking me out? Everybody has tripods. My name is kicking you out. We're just asking some questions to see if, it's that, if that's allowed. Why? Because that can be. I protest this harassment. It's okay. Hi, miss. How are you? My name is Emily. So, you want to grab this on the hill? It's okay. It's, it's my stand, ma'am. It's okay. We understand that. We're just going to make sure it's not uh, put the safety officer. I, it's just okay. You have to understand that, okay? So, uh, it's my I, stand. I know. And I, I, I understand okay, he's that. got nothing to do with that. I know. I just want to make sure that everything is safe. The hill. Okay. Can I just look inside? I'm missing the speeches right now. Can we go? Can you give me? I'm not not complying. Okay. What are you okay. implying here? I'm a member of the press, and you're harassing me. Sir, can I just look inside? Why are you harassing me? This is kind of. Let me. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm Corporal Kante, nice to meet you. Uh, we are part of the liaison team. May I ask why are you bringing a mic? It's my stand, you'd have to talk to me about it. I'm sorry. You I'm a here. member this of the, the press and it's my stand and you're impeding my work. I'd like to proceed to the speeches. Do you have a press? Uh, do you have a yes, press? I have. I'd like to see it, please. Can you open it for me? Thank you, appreciate that. Sorry, this is not a Parliament Hill press pass. So, it's an international press card. No, but we need. Okay. We need a, uh, Let's look at the press card. We need a. We need a Parliament Hill press pass. Oh, and why is that? Because this is Parliament. We have your blood. Oh yeah. Yes. This is unceded territory. You don't even I, have any jurisdiction here. Well, I. Do Are you impeding the press to access the speeches I'm not, on a hill? I'm not stopping you to come on the hill. Okay, then I'm gonna go. You're not allowed to bring that in. Why not? You're not allowed to bring that in. Why You're not? Allowed to go in. Why this not? This could be used as a weapon. So this is the reason why I'm not letting you in with that. You can go in, no problem, but this cannot come in. I have no issues to be here, for you to be here. You have the freedom of speech as everybody else here. You're more than welcome here, but not with this for safety purposes. I just videotaped okay. all speeches That's in okay. front of the Superior Court of Canada. That's okay. And you're telling me on the hill, my tripod is not allowed, okay? Why is that? Is I, there a different law in front of the Superior Court be, of, of Canada? You can be as loud Why as you am want. I not allowed on Parliament Hill you with my tripod, with which I just videotaped all the speeches in front of the Superior Court of Canada? Are you impeding the press, videotaping the speeches on Parliament Hill with a stand? Really? Why are you impeding the press? I'm not stopping you to come on the hill. I just videotaped I all the speeches in front of the you Superior Court with this stand you. here. I'm not with this stand you. right there. Okay. And it's not okay to have it here on the hill. Why? The stand needs to go. The stand needs to go. I need cooperation on your hand. I'm not stopping you to come on the hill. You can videotape whatever you want on Parliament Hill. I'm stopping you to bring the stand for safety purposes. Why didn't anybody stop me in front of the Superior Court of Justice? The Supreme Court of Canada is not my jurisdiction. I'm asking you okay. not to bring this You'd have to here explain this to me. Safety. Why is the Superior Listen, Court of Justice not your jurisdiction? It's not my jurisdiction. Because I'm on you Parliament are PBS? Hill. Yes, I'm on Parliament Hill. And what as a matter of fact, ma'am, ma let me inform you, you have no jurisdiction here on the hill at all because hey, this is on unceded, 
unceded no. territory. I'm fully aware of that, ma'am. Okay, and this good. is a memorial. The purpose of today is a memorial. Why don't you just stick around and see what I'm doing with the stand if you're so I afraid do not of me? Mind, I'm not afraid of you. I don't mind you being here and videotape everything. That's fine. But the stand has to go for safety purposes. It might be for your safety too, in case this is used against you. So please, I'm not I ask you. I, I'm not afraid. You might not be afraid, I'm not but I'm not afraid. I'm caring for everybody's safety here. I know here. Canadians are very peaceful okay. citizens. I'm not. I'm not going to deal with this. And I'm not longer. afraid of any violence. I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal with this any longer. I've asked you either to comply and come up the hill and do your event and do things. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? All right, thank you. I'm fine with that. I just want this out the hill. Okay, can I go now? I wasn't stopping you. Okay, good. Holy cow, man. Intimidation. about political prisoners? Yeah, if anyone thinks we don't have political prisoners in Canada, that's not true. Uh, we've got Kevin J. Johnson. He ran as mayor in Mississauga twice. Uh, he visited... Uh, How long has he been in jail now? Five and a half weeks. And for what? Causing a disturbance. And when, when is he going? Is there going to be a hearing? Has he got, like, what, like what's going on? And what's he's, taking so long? Five he, weeks? There's been, he's been, uh, he's gone to bail court twice, been denied both times. The fine is $500. So he's spent five and a half weeks in jail. The judges are getting a lot of political pressure. Uh, it's coming from the Kenny government. Kenny is the premier of Alberta. And he called uh, Kevin something, some kind of unbecoming uh, statement. I don't recall it and I don't want to misquote him. But it's all over the mainstream media. It was super inappropriate anyway. Yeah, so anyways. That's what I remember. So who signs a check it's in Alberta? It's Jason Kenney. He's the top of the uh, food chain, per se. And if you look at how the courts have mistreated him, 
The first eight days he was incarcerated in uh, Edmonton, his lawyer couldn't even get a hold of him. So Miranda writes, out the window, gone. And if you don't think he's a political prisoner, why are they keeping him in for such a mild charge? He, they've got video evidence, there is no case, even his lawyer here from Toronto can't believe the chicanery that's going on with the case. So five and a half weeks for what? Something, uh, he's trying to buy shoes basically. He didn't like even step into be, the store. Like, you know, the images I saw of um, Kevin J. Johnson on his own show, I would have not been surprised if somebody had complained in a way that it was just not appropriate in, in public to sound that way. So I would have expected something like for harassment or public nuisance. Even so, I always found that a very pretentious charge, but I'm also not a lawyer. So you may illustrate that at, at your experience, what these charges actually entail and what would be a typical behavior that would be charged with such a charge. Usually you make bail the next morning when they arrest you, but because uh, Kevin has come down hard against Alberta Health Services, he's, uh, he's pro-health. And in this world, if you're pro-health, it means you don't wear a mask, especially when a mask does absolutely nothing for this coronavirus. So he, he endorses uh, you know, healthy living, healthy eating, exercise, uh, people being active, taking vitamins, but good, just good nutrition, right? And then he looks at all the facts, look at the numbers. This pandemic we're experiencing now, the world population has increased in 2020. What kind of pandemic is this where the population increases? And if you look at all the media reports that are being hidden that you'll only find on the internet, you'll see uh, governor and officials from the states saying only 6% uh, of the actual coronavirus deaths were coronavirus. There were other things. For it, example, vitamin D3 deficiency, which looks like the exact same graph and is totally underreported. Yeah. You remember me saying that in one of the yeah. Zoom conferences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Since December or something like that, you know. You know. What would be. But don't get me wrong, the first two weeks when they started talking about this, let's uh, flatten the curve, is it serious? I took precautions when I went out in public. Everybody First two weeks, I, put, I wore it. But then I started looking at what's coming out, the evidence. Something doesn't smell right here. Exactly. And then the more you dig into it, it says, okay, this looks like it could be fraud. And then the more you dig into it, you look at other sources, uh, other than mainstream media, and then you decide that this is not even about a virus. This is about power, control, shut down the economy. Do you think Getting some... people used to serve, which is basically communism, socialism. And what's coming is a technocracy. Is there any way that people can support uh, Kevin uh, to, like, do you think there's any pressure from the public working anything possibly to mail the representatives in order to at least uh, treat him fairly, uh, you know, and not, uh, like, intimidate him, keep him as a pro political prisoner? Here's the thing. Uh, we had to take down a couple weeks ago, uh, AHS, Alberta Health Services, were complaining about uh, some of the posts. So we took down almost every post that we could find Is that, right? wow. that had any criticism of all better health services because they don't like being called out. Wow. You cannot call out the government and expect to not have contribution, uh, retributions. This is, well, you guys I'm know what it is. I'm impressed you took it down. So they should actually be satisfied with that? They've got the guns. They've got the law. They've got the courts on their side. What's the dictatorship? Even Rocco Galati, when uh, the Comer case, when he lost the Comer case over uh, Bank of Canada, he came out and he publicly stated, Canada is a quiet dictatorship. People, you think you're free? <laughs> you're dreaming. What's the website? Where can we donate? What can we do? We uh, want to help. KevinJJohnson.me. He's already raised about $7,000 of a $30,000 target for um, one of the top five lawyers to represent them. Uh, the JCCF has refused them. I'm hoping they might consider getting in because, quite frankly, they were running roughshod all, all over the Constitution. He's not getting any of his constitutional rights heard. We'll see what the judgment is on Friday, if the judge actually considers it. And uh, I don't think so. I'm rather pessimistic because they've turned every everything they can at him. They've thrown everything at him just to see what will stick. 
And apparently some of the judges, they're far left judges. These are judges that were trained through the NGO system. Well, a lot of these liberal judges work for NGOs. That's where they did the training. That's who sponsored them, that's who indoctrinated them. And this is what's, uh, that's how you get judges making laws from the bench. Um, when you said Adam, you were referring to the Skelly case? Sorry, what do you mean? Skelly, there's another one. Well, that's another, another lawsuit, though, so you were not referencing to that one. Because I was, I was wondering, is the case going to be heard in Alberta on Monday, you said? Uh, actually, there's all kinds of cases being heard on Monday. Kevin was, uh, Kevin's case was heard, I believe, on Monday. And the Adam Skelly case was heard on Monday. And Well, they turned it down in first instance, I believe, in Ontario. Yeah, well, they turned it down on a technicality, but there's, again, a lot of chicanery. If the judges and the law society really wanted to bring justice, it would be swift, they would hear the cases, they wouldn't just say, we refuse to hear this on a technicality. Is this about getting justice done? And warning, I'm going to send a message out to the judges if they may tune into this. You judges are supposed to be impartial. You guys are supposed to uphold the Constitution of uh, Canadians. Even though I don't particularly personally agree with the system, you have a responsibility to guarantee the, the highest law of the land, which is the Constitution, is uphold because it isn't. If it's not, we're going to fall into tyranny fast. And if you think it's not going to touch you, go look at what's happened in history. You're going to be sadly mistaken. And actually, don't be surprised if you're terminally mistaken. Because if civil war breaks out, all bets are off the table. I'm trying to avoid this. We're trying to bring the truth. We want the law upheld. We want to avoid this at all cost. But guys, judges, it's up to you. Do your job properly. I understand there's even some personal background involved. As far as Sending what? out this message of um, the responsibility of judges to uphold the separation of powers, for example, and be a check on the government. Absolutely. Judges have to enforce the Constitution, the highest law of the land. That is their biggest responsibility. That's what. That's why we've enjoyed peace and prosperity in this country. And if you're not doing that, things go downhill very quickly. Um, History proves it. This isn't my. This is not my suspicion. I want History my audience this. to know one thing about you, Ed, and that is um, that you are originally from Slovenia. No, no, I was born here. My parents came from Slovenia. Okay, I'm, I misunderstood that. My apologies. Um, in any case, there's a personal experience in that, and um, even so, you're, like, I find it important to understand that you, you're not a professional media person for like your whole professional life, but you um, gain a living at, as a uh, construction worker, you told me earlier. A uh, contractor, yeah. Um, you know, I find it's really important to understand that this kind of insight uh, it's hard to get in uh, our for-profit propaganda channels, I can only call them now, you know, because you are producing uh, Kevin J. Johnson's show and you have been doing that for a while. So you, you, you're producing a very important channel and message. And I've watched the show, it's a well-produced show, and I feel Kevin is very lucky that you help him with producing this show, you know. And on the other hand, I find it really important that you also have a different input. You're not only a professional media producer, but you have, you have some other outlooks, you have some other insights as well. So that's why I found it interesting to actually have a conversation with you. I like to look at things. If a fly in the wall was sitting up on that wall and it's watching and it doesn't understand English, just look at what is actually happening. It gives, it's a rather unique perspective because if you don't hear the words but you see all the actions, see the results, this is going to change a narrative and that's what, that's what the truth is all about. Uh, did you want to point out any other political prisoners? Well, they locked up Max for well, a few hours. How about myself? How about my girlfriend? How about when I file a court case against Dina Hinshaw, the Chief Medical Officer of Health of Alberta? 
and I get my date in court and a judge a permission to subpoena and then all of a sudden three days later they come and shut me down and it's obstruction of justice they told me my court case is cancelled in the middle of a trial and now I got to go back in on July 21st to take Dina Hinshaw back to court and Jason Kenney back to court and they'll shut it down again they keep blocking us in every every judicial system everywhere so if I'm not a political prisoner with chains on I'm a political prisoner with a piece of tape across my mouth because I can't I can't face and address my accusers I don't have the opportunity to under common law in a court of law in a court of law of Canada to address my accusers and cross-examine my accusers when asked on the RCMP when I talked to the RCMP, or cross-examine the RCMP officers, neither one of them could repeat their oath, what their oath is, what their duty is as a peace officer. Neither one of them could repeat it. The one officer was a veteran, 12 years in the military, transferred over to the RCMP. I asked him if he could say his military oath. He says, absolutely, I can. I said, you can, can you? He says, that's because that's your, you live by that. He says, yes, sir. And then I asked him, can you repeat and tell me your, your RCMP oath? He says, no, I can't. Right there proves incompetency in our judicial, or competency in our police services, and competency in the RCMP, and competency in the government. And what they, when they want to silence you, they'll silence you. I'm banned off every social media. I got a ticket saying that I'm not allowed to use any Google product. I can't use Facebook. I can't use any social media anymore because I'm so banned from being an outspoken advocate against this tyrannical government and it's nothing else but if it, in most countries you don't vote out a dictator you kick him out well we have a dictator here it's time we kick him out straight up and we're gonna and with the power between everybody and we can do it and bring it and do it you'll see mountains like he said like that chief said uh, I can't remember who he was the chief bear clan of the bear clan out of Aquasassin he said it, we can move mountains if we just stand together. This is, it. This is the truth. Some people would argue, I'm just going to ask you one more question, that um, a fast decline in the first instance actually advantages to move the case up to a higher level that's actually more significant in the decision later on. Would you agree with that So assessment? what is going to happen, so I will file a bench warrant against Dina Hinshaw if she does not appear in court. After I file a bench warrant, I bring up more accusers. If they still block me and obstruct me, then I file in with the Supreme Court of Canada and where I take the Albertan government to the Supreme Court of Canada to show obstruction of justice, to prove all the corruption in every political system. And once we do, Canadians will start to see it 100%. This government never has, never will be for you. This government is for themselves. And we're going to prove it. And once we prove it, then we can set a precedence. And we can begin to start working on healing each province, one politician at a time. And once we can get those politicians out of the office, and we can take them down and show the corruption, then we can start like these people say, to heal. And we can start working on electoral reform. We can start working on our own independent nations inside of a nation. Each province has the opportunity to, to govern itself. We do not need a federal government, 100%. It's not, it's not an opportunity to govern yourself in the, as a province. It's, it's 1867, it was put right in paperwork. Right in paper. Each the federal government only had the right for direct taxation for import and export of goods. It's not in those uh, right. exact words, but that's the idea. I gotta go get they were not allowed... Can you say your name? And where oh. can we support you? Plug your so website. I'm please. Patrick so. King. Uh, Pat King. I'm a real underscore Patrick underscore King on Instagram. That's all I have. I have Facebook, but I'm banned from Facebook for but life. you're going to get a website sometime. I, I'm working on a website as we speak. Um, Did you buy the domain name? I'm the, I do. I have my own domain name, yeah. Um, what would it be? Patrickking.ca? Uh, uh, yeah, patkking.ca. Uh, we're working on it right now. Uh, the problem is I am so... Wow. That's illegal. We tried to do that before. <laughs> yeah, we tried to do that and we got kicked out well, last year. Well, it's their land. They should do what they want. Um, what I was going to say though is, is, is straight up that uh, um, I'm the number one banned, censored person in Canada right now, in my mind. I do not have any it's means to... It's a real to... honor and privilege to have you on my channel here at Broadcom.net. Thank you, Patrick. Absolutely. Thank you very much. The reason why I bring music to every single rally that we do across this nation is because music brings people together and it shows you the truth. And the truth does not care about how you feel about it. It is simply the truth. And sometimes it hurts, 
and sometimes it makes you cry. But at the end of the day, it brings us together. Thank you all for your diligence in this fight for humanity and evolution. Once again, many lights. Thank you, everyone. Um, after seeing uh, all of the indigenous people come here and speak, uh, that just changed my life. I feel like the natives are the leadership that we need. The indigenous people have the teachings that we need. The whole world needs. The compassion they share, regardless of what they went through. The ability to put down their arms, regardless of what comes up against them. We need to adapt love, we need to adapt their nature, we need to give them more of a voice in all of our lives. Today, I realize I want to explore more of who they are. As we all should. We're on the land which they cultivated so much love just to be destroyed. We should allow them to revitalize that love that was once here. for the gratitude and if that is so and I really am appointed I gotta make sure that each one of us gets anointed cause everlasting peace that's what I stand for they're giving us a bit right now but guess what I demand more I just want each one of us to understand more and I never want to hear any of you say I am poor Once you know we're rich with love Sing with me I said we're rich with love There you go I said we're rich with love You know We're rich with love made a few mistakes here in this lifetime but i've forgiven myself and now i'm looking for my shot there's nothing that the heart won't fix we find a true happiness when we harbor bliss for us to live is one that's what i am for i see a bit of it right now but i just want to hit fast forward they say you get exactly what you ask for That's how I know we'll make it through this big crash course Once we know we're rich with love Sing with me I said we're rich with love Let's get loud I said we're rich with love You know We're rich with love Gonna stop me. Say I'm rich with love, yeah, I'm rich with love, ain't nobody gonna stop me. Say I'm rich with love, yeah, I'm rich with love, ain't nobody gonna stop me. Say I'm rich with love, yeah, I'm rich with love,
rich with love, yeah, I'm rich with love, ain't nobody gonna stop me. Say I'm rich with love, yeah, I'm rich with love, ain't nobody gonna stop me. No way, ain't nobody gonna stop me. No way, ain't nobody gonna stop me. No way, ain't nobody gonna stop me. You guys know those people out there that think they're better than you? Just because they have a little bit more money than you? Or maybe they grew up in a fancier neighborhood and the parents have a better job. Guess what? I want you to look them in the eyes and say, Hey! I'm rich with love. Don't even hesitate. Hey! I'm rich with love. Take it by surprise. I'm rich with love, you know. I'm rich with love. Then you walk away singing. in life always remember that you're rich with love you were born with the greatest riches there is and it's right inside of you acknowledge that love and love will heal you love will see you through love will mend all wounds so let the love be our guide and always remember God is within God bless you all